Portobello Road, street where the riches of ages are stowed. Anything and everything a chap can unload is sold off the barrow in Portobello Road. You'll find what you want in the... Hello, my fellow YouTubers and subscribers, and welcome to my latest movie review, where today I review Bedknobs and Broomsticks. Directed by Robert Stevenson and Ward Kimball. So, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, this is a Disney movie. It's kind of half live action, half animation, and it's a family adventure film. And the reason for this review is to commemorate Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury is the main star of the film, and she, a few days ago, sadly passed away at the age of 96. This movie was released originally in 1971. Though it did have a re-release in 1979, and it has had various edits, which uh, have affected whichever version you watch of this film. I watched the cut that was on Disney+, Plus, so my review is based on that one, which is the two-hour cut. So, the story of this film is as follows. An apprentice witch, three kids, and a cynical magician con man search for the missing component to a magic spell to be used in the defence of Britain in World War II. So, Bedknobs and Broomsticks. This is a great movie. It's great fun. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call this film a masterpiece, but it's certainly a incredibly fun and entertaining ride. There's no question about it that this film really is just a ton of fun to watch. It's such a heartwarming film, which is really ironic considering the fact that we do actually see the Nazis in, in this film. It's set during World War II, so during quite a bleak and difficult time. But yeah, they were able to bring as much heart into this as they could. So that is, a, is something to be commemorated. The fact that the story is quite simple, it is quite fun, but it is very entertaining. And I think that the adventure, the idea of this bed that can transport them anywhere is it's just fun. You know, it makes for a great fun premise because you can literally take the story anywhere and go in any direction. The fact that this film is so simple, it really works. And you believe the characters, you believe the journeys they're on and you grow to care for them. And I think what's especially great is the bond that um, Angela Lansbury's character has with the children. Yeah, she plays Miss Price, who is a trainee witch who wants to complete her training, but um, the course was closed down because there are some missing pages of a book, so there are there is insufficient material to continue the course. So sadly, she was she was let go from the course. The course was dropped. And the movie sees her go on this journey to find the missing pieces and work out the puzzles and, and work out the spells and try to remember everything she's been taught. And she meets with a professor known as Professor Brown. He is uh, kind of disgraced, I guess, because his course has kind of uh, uh, collapsed, so he's not able to sort of teach any her anything else. They find him in London town, and then they reunite, and then he joins her on her mission to sort of, you know, help her learn her magic and um and save the world and the fact that they try to use the magic to sort of help in the war is quite interesting and i, I like the whole idea that um it becomes more just about her own needs to finish her training because that isn't compelling obviously the movie needs something else to kind of give itself a bit more weight and i think the the rapport that develops between angela lansbury and david tomlinson who plays Brown is uh, is very good and I guess towards the end there is that element of romance they do form that romantic connection especially through their you know love and cherishment of the kids but I really like David Tomlinson's character he's a he's a really fun character to watch he's not necessarily a comedic character straight up but he is fun to watch and I think that he brings a lot of heart and warmth and joy to the film uh, speaking of heart and joy <laughs> we also have the three children that are in the film they're not the greatest actors, I do admit. I mean, they are young, so I do give certain leniency to child actors. But I thought they did a good job, considering they have to sort of put on Cockney accents. I, I, I don't think the accents sound completely genuine, and I do believe they are trying to put them on. But to be fair, for a first attempt, it's not too bad. You can kind of see how they all interact with each other. I would have liked the film to go more into their dynamic and, and, and sort of see them sort of a bit more dysfunctional in the beginning and then gradually become more functional through Miss Price's um, care and through the adventure. Because in the, from the beginning to the end, the kids don't really change. They are just kind of there. So I would have preferred if the movie took the time to kind of 
develop a little bit more of a dysfunction with the children so that she would have to fix that. And again, through the magic, they all learn to bond. That would be what I would do. But, you know, in terms of the performances, they are pretty decent. Um, Ian Wayhill as Charlie, Cindy O'Callaghan as Carrie, and Roy Snart as Paul. They are fun, and they do have some funny lines, I must admit. <laughs> there are moments when um, they did make me laugh, especially Paul when he was talking about the bed knob. Um, yeah, <laughs> so, I don't think it was intentionally meant to be in, you know, an innuendo, but it did actually make me laugh, I must admit. And uh, David Tomlinson and Angela Lansbury, they are fantastic in this film. They steal the show. I will admit, though, even though they're great singers, the songs in this movie, they're not that great. <laughs> I mean, they're fine, but they're not, you know, stand out. The only one that I can really remember is Portobello Road. Also, when we go into kind of the animation land of the film, that is great, and I love the animation. I think it's fantastic, very colourful, loads of colourful creatures and everything. Although the underwater section, how on earth are they singing and breathing underwater? I, I don't know. I mean, I know it's an animation, and it's not meant to be realistic, but... Yeah, it's kind of weird. I feel like this, this film has kind of a mishmash of various different elements. And then we go into this section where there's like a ball game as well in which um, Brown takes, take, uh, takes a part, and um, that's quite fun to watch. I do admit, though, the film's editing is probably its weakest point. You can see by the end product of this film that it's a film that has been messed around with quite a bit, and there are certain scenes which at times feel a little bit disjointed or like irrelevant to the main story. Like the ball game, we, we could have cut some of that out, actually. I, even though it's entertaining, I do feel like some of the ball game stuff is is a little bit unnecessary <laughs> there's this certain elements of this film there are there are sections small sections which do start to slow down a bit i don't think it has the tightest pace and i do think at, at points it does feel like we are kind of just meandering from one set piece to the next and with a basic premise that is still entertaining but i'm just like come on movie just it's just kind of get to the point now it's the the, the the second act of the film is definitely the weakest one even the the number that takes place in in london portobello road i i like the song <laughs> but the dance uh, instrumental dance piece goes on for ages it goes on for a, a really long time and at points i do kind of tune out with this film i go in and out with, with how much i enjoy this film but overall it is good and i can see what they were trying to do and again like i said the whole fantasy aspect is really good and the fact that she is a witch <laughs> she's a trainee witch i think that's a cool idea We've got some other great people in this film. Like We've even got Bruce Forsyth in this film. Bruce Forsyth, you know, incredibly famous man from England. He used to be the host of Strictly Come Dancing. Um, the show is still going on, obviously, but sadly he passed away a few years ago. He's good in the film. He plays Swinburne. We've also got Roddy McDowell, who's known for Planet of the Apes. He's in this film, and he plays Mr. Jelk. Um, so yeah, there's some big names here. And then the third act of the film is very much populated by the Nazis, they just kind of, they kind of just turn up and they, they cause this raid. I'm not exactly sure why. I suppose they're just looking and hunting for English soldiers. But even so, it does feel a little bit abrupt and a bit random that they just turn up. And again, that's what I'm saying about the editing. It feels like there are certain scenes that maybe come out of nowhere and feel a little disjointed. Don't quite work as well as, as it should. Like with the film Mary Poppins, because Robert Stevenson directed that, Mary Poppins um, flowed very consistently. The narrative was clear, it was concise. Even though it was a long film, it was, it was paced really well. And when they made the jump to the animation land, it felt natural. This one didn't feel quite as natural, but it was still charming enough that you didn't really care. You could still kind of enjoy the visuals and enjoy the splendor that is on screen. It is a splendid film and it really is heartwarming. And if you just want something to watch for fun on a Sunday afternoon like I've just done, this is not a bad choice, it really isn't. It's a little bit rough around the edges. <laughs> I think perhaps a potential final edit. I think to get this movie concise and to the point, I think potentially cutting out 15 minutes would have probably helped. But that being said, I really had a great time with it. It is fun. The music is good, even though the songs aren't the best. Some of them are quite memorable, more than others. And the cast are terrific. They're definitely having a ball. The performances are top-notch. And the story is simple. It's fine. You can follow it. And there are some brief emotional moments here. Like, it seems that the, the children really do bond with Miss Price and she really realises that she does care for them because at first she's living alone in this big house and she doesn't really have much of a purpose other than trying to become a witch. And, it's, and there's a really heartbreaking scene where Brown decides to leave and 
go on a train back to London. And the kids are like, oh, you could be our dad. We want you to be our dad. And you can tell he kind of doesn't want to get that attached, but he, he already is attached and he doesn't, he doesn't want to sort of go there, if that makes sense. He would rather sort of detach himself and continue with his life as it were. But then he makes the decision to go back and help them, which is very noble. So overall, I think Bedknobs and Broomsticks is a good film. It's very solidly done. It, again, a little bit rough around the edges. It has its minor issues. But overall, I think this is solid fun. So I'm going to score Bedknobs and Broomsticks an 8 out of 10. Portobello Road, street where the riches of ages are stowed. Anything and everything a chap can unload is sold off the barrow in Portobello Road. You'll find what you want in the Portobello It's by no means a masterpiece, but it's by no means terrible. So, yeah, if you want a fun time, this is a good movie. And once again, rest in peace to Angela Lansbury. Um, really a terrific actress. <laughs> really charming, you know, great singer as well. I have reviewed some other Angela Lansbury films. She was in Death on the Nile, the original one. I've reviewed that. I also reviewed Beauty and the Beast. Obviously, she was Mrs. Potts. Uh, but I am going to review one more film, which I would like to talk about, <laughs> which features Angela Lansbury. It's not a classic or anything, but it's a film that I watched during my childhood, and that is Nanny McPhee, the original Nanny McPhee. I'm going to review that because she's in it, <laughs> and because I'd like to talk about it. And I'll probably review the sequel to it as well at some stage. So yeah, thank you for watching this review. Please like and comment down below. Please hit the subscribe button for more content like this. And what do you think of this film? Please let me know down below, as long as we keep it civil. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much all for watching this review. I'm Pajak's Perspective. See ya. Bye for now.